Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Beast Upgrades Part 9. In this video we'll be looking at performance and temperature results and we'll also be having a bit of a look over my overclocking settings. This is the final video for this system. I will very soon be building a completely new system. Some of the parts will be coming out of this system and going into the new one but yeah almost everything about the the new system is yeah completely built from the ground up again and completely new so that's about all the details I'm going to give you about the new system so I went over all your requests because I asked you in the previous Singularity Beast upgrade videos to request what benchmarks you wanted to see and yeah I've got I think I've got every single benchmark that I saw requested and and I've thrown a couple more in as well alright so first of all I'll show you the benchmark results in a number of screenshots then we're going to move on to some temperature results which will just be my my normal temperature testing 30 minutes of prime 95 and then 30 minutes of folding folding at home for the GPUs and yeah that's about all the temperature results that we'll be looking at I mean I might give you a look at the the coolant temperatures as well once I've heated the system right up and I'm not actually going to be overclocking the the GPUs and you know then doing another whole run of benchmarks mostly because I, I have done a bit of overclocking with these with these GPUs and I didn't get very far I was actually quite disappointed with how far I got uh, I think next time I you know next generation when I buy GPUs I'll be buying some kind of overclocking card with beefed up power with a beefed up power delivery system and you know higher quality components all of that something like the MSI lightning or you know there's quite a lot of overclocking cards out there I'd much prefer something like that so what I will be showing you though is the overclocking settings that I run 24 7 on my CPU and memory and yeah that's it that's all that we'll be looking at today and yeah as I said this is the final the final video on this system just quickly before I go through these benchmark results I just want to elaborate uh, a little bit more on what happened with the overclocking of the GPUs all these benchmark results are with the GPUs at stock clocks and the CPU at 4.4 gigahertz and the memory at 2000 megahertz and that's what I run 24 7 and I've been running those settings for over a year now so yeah certainly no problems with those settings settings they're completely stable I haven't had a single blue screen or crash for any of that time so that's what I'm going to be running for every single benchmark result today okay the yeah what happened with the GPUs I couldn't get them over eight, 850 megahertz on the core and about 2100 on the memory and that is really really disappointing for me I think there's a weakness somewhere whether it's in the motherboard or one of the graphics cards yeah and that's the reason why I want to get over overclocking graphics cards next time I'll be trying again on my new platform when I build the new system I'll certainly be trying to overclock the GPUs again and see if I can get further I always overclock my hardware I've had a lot of experience overclocking uh, I've even, you know, spent a long, long time in the 3D Mark Vantage Hall of Fame and in the 3D Mark 11 Hall of Fame. I'm not sure if I'm still in there. I haven't checked for quite a while. I doubt I'm still in there because I haven't posted any results. But anyway, on to these benchmark results.
Okay, now for a look at the settings, the BIOS settings that I've been running for over a year now, 24-7. So just having a look at the overclock settings that I'm running. Remember it's a Rampage 3 Extreme and a Core i7-980X. Something that you need to take into consideration is the very high ambient temperature that I have where I live. Okay, 33 degrees is the average temperature in my room, 24-7. And that the temperature of the room, the ambient temperature directly affects the temperature of the hardware. So I think you've had a long, I think you've had long enough to have a look at those settings just there now. I'm not going to explain too much of this. I'm just going to go through it and show it to you. So I'm running a, a multiplier of 22. Only people who understand overclocking will understand this. And you know it might be difficult for people to understand this who are not used to this particular. BIOS in this particular motherboard, but you know there is some some basic settings that you can understand, and that is the multiplier of 22, the BLK of 200. Very simple overclock that I'm running here. It's just you know this is what I came to after a lot of testing. But as I was saying, the room temperature, the ambient temperature, directly affects the temps of the hardware. Uh, in this case, the CPU. So this is as far as I was able to overclock because of heat. I can go heaps further if I can cool the CPU better, you know. The only limit that I have is is temperature, is heat, you know. At this overclock, well I just ran Prime 95 and it failed after 10 minutes, it was getting up to 90 degrees. And my room temperature is about 34 at the moment, so, you know, get, that gives you an idea that directly affects the hardware temps and because I'm just about to upgrade my system, I haven't dust cleaned my radiator, you know, the, the radiator that's cooling the CPU and memory for a very long time, it's very clogged up. So my temps are running about 10 degrees hotter than they normally do. Very bad time to show you my temperatures, you know, I've got all these things working against me. So yeah, unfortunately Prime 95 has failed at these overclocking settings. So I'm running 2000 megahertz on the memory, ULK 3000 megahertz and a QPI of whatever that is, uh, you know, that's how it's measured on the Rampage 3, but yeah, you'll see it. I can't remember how, it, you know, sometimes you'll see the actual multi multipliers for these things, so you'll see the multiplier for the the Encore and the, the multiplier for the QPI on different boards, but what you're seeing here is what it multiplies out to, if, you know, if that makes any sense. As I said, it will make sense to overclock. It's 910927 uh, control control rate of uh, 2N on the memory. That's 12 gig of memory. Keep in mind, of course, they're dominated GT. So I'm running X power, full load line calibration. Uh, I'm running 1.425 on the CPU and 1.3875 on the QPI. And I'm running 1.65 on the memory and 1.66 on on the north bridge. So there you go. That's the overclocking settings that I'm running. And yeah, as I've said, I've been running them for quite a long time. I kind of got an average CPU. You know, my 980X is is average. What nobody seems to understand is how your room temperature, your ambient temperature, directly affects the temps of your your CPU. Living in a hot climate, this is extremely frustrating for me because every video that I make where I talk about temperatures, you know, temperatures of any component, I get so many troll comments saying how bad my temperatures are. And all it shows is that those people aren't taking ambient temperatures into consideration, uh, which basically just shows a lack of knowledge. And I can't believe the amount of review sites that don't include their ambient temperatures when they're, you know, giving temperature results. Because basically, without an ambient temperature, your temperature result is completely invalid. It doesn't mean anything. Okay, so because. Prime 95 failed after 10 minutes on the overclocking settings that I was using. I've already explained why it failed. It, it is passed previously, but it's failing now because I have a dust clogged radiator. And it's also the hottest time of the year here where I live. 
So what I've done is completely defaulted the CPU clocks but I am running the XMP profile on my memory. So default CPU XMP on memory and I am now going to run Prime95 again for 30 minutes. Okay, Prime95 has been running for 30 minutes and on the left hand side you can see 38.8 degrees is the temperature of the GPU motherboard loop, the blue loop and 42.2 degrees on the right is the temperature of the CPU and memory loop, the red loop. Now usually I'd show you this in screen capture using screen capture software or a screenshot but I just wanted to prove that yeah these temperatures are being taken at exactly the same time those are the temperatures of all the cores okay so I mean one of them reached 57 but most of the time they're sitting around 50, 53 degrees and this is after 30 minutes of Prime 95, large FFTs. So the CPU is at stock clock. So look at that. That's about, what is it? Uh, well, let's say it's 52 degrees, okay? And the temperature of the coolant is 42 degrees. So that's a 10 degree delta, which is incredible. The CPU temperature is only 10 degrees above the temperature of the coolant. And the coolant is only 10 degrees above the room temperature because the room temperature is 30, about 32 degrees. So there you go. 20 degrees above room temp, 20 degree delta overall, 10 degrees above coolant temp. So yeah, that's how effective a water cooling system can be. Because just imagine this CPU on air cooling in with these ambient temperatures. It would be reaching Close to, close to 90 degrees, I'd say over 90 degrees. Anyway, time to move on to the GPUs. It's a little bit unfortunate that I couldn't show you the, over, the overclocked temperature results, but I'm just about to build a new system. This system is right at the end of its life, so yeah, I, I don't really care at this point in time. I'm, I'm only worried about the new system. Uh, okay, so the other thing, the GPUs, I'm also running them at stock. So I'm now going to show you the GPU temperature results after 30 minutes of folding at home. Okay, I've been running folding at home for 30 minutes and as I said before, the temperature of the red loop, the CPU and memory loop is on the left hand side and the temperature of the blue loop, the GPU and motherboard loop is on the right hand side at 57.8 degrees and that is damn hot. Keep in mind the ambient temperature is about 33, 34 degrees at the moment. Now I just need to make sure that I keep the camera up so I don't show you what's sitting down there on the desk. It's a bit of a secret at the moment. So, temperatures of the GPUs, 72, 70 and 72. So there you go, around 70 degrees Keeping in mind that the coolant temperature is nearly 60 degrees and the room temperature is around 33, 34 degrees. So pretty decent result. The CPU sorry, the GPUs are at stock clocks though. But yeah, that is a hot temperature for that coolant to to be at. Alright, so interesting for me to see all those results again. I have done a lot of testing in the past when, you know, mainly when I first built this system I did a lot of overclocking like I always do when I first build a system just to find its boundaries, to find its limits and that's when I go through all the results but yeah it was good for me to run all those benchmarks again and see all the results again. So this is probably the, well it's actually the second last time you're going to see this system because yeah the last time you see it will be when I'm pulling it apart to put the GPUs, the pumps and also the hard drives into the new system. So a little bit sad you know because this has been my primary system for nearly two years and I really like the system. I'm happy with it, I'm proud of it. I you know it's almost how I exactly how I wanted it so 
there it is there's all the results I hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe like and favorite if you want to see more thanks everyone